In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a really awesome background image gallery scrolling effect. So what I mean is this. Uh, as I scroll, I have the background image gallery um, on this section scrolling with an up and down effect. It looks really, really effective. Now, often when you have something that looks like this, the the actual image gallery would be a static image and then there's a background overlay over the top. But as you can see, this is all interactive and really, really beautiful. It's a great way to show off um, a range of images. So if your service is very image based, very visual, and you've got some you know, after shots or whether you're a photographer and you, you want to show a range of your work, this is a really great way to show off that range. And just to show you that it's a background, uh, we've it's you know it's not clickable. There's an overlay over the top, and then we have a testimonial carousel in the forefront here. Um, and if you'd like to know how to build that with a custom post type, check out my other videos. Um, but yeah, this is a really powerful way to show off a range of images for your service. Um, obviously, if I was using this, I would have a, a few website pages, uh, page images, um, home pages here, there, and everywhere to give people an idea of uh, the, the flavor of my designs. So, yeah, really, really powerful um, effect and not too difficult to build in Elementor. So, let's have a look under the bonnet. Here I am in the Elementor interface, and uh, if this looks a bit different to you, uh, Elementor has now made the editor bar a default setting. So uh, if, if you want to have this editor bar, then pop along to your Elementor settings and check out the features and you just need to activate that. Uh, but the Elementor editor bar is really quite fantastic and uh, I would recommend you switch on over to that. It's very cool. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is pull apart everything. I'm just going to show you what is where and how it works. Uh, I'm not going to do a, a fresh build through because I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, but if you would like to go to the description below, uh, you'll see a link to a blog post where I've got the different container settings just so you can go through as like a sort of a checklist. So, so check out that description below. Right, so to, to get this, uh, we first of all have to have obviously a top container. So uh, you would click here and create this one here that's labeled first example. And this one doesn't have so many essential settings to be honest, it's, it really is just a top container. The most important setting, aside from the background color, which you can you know define, so that's what comes through there. The most important setting is on layout and additional options, and you need to make sure that overflow is set to hidden. Okay, so uh, that's that's the most important setting for this top container. This is also the container that you would use to apply any uh, shape divider to. So uh, if, if you're liking this effect where the, the gallery disappears into the shape divider, that's the container you'd want to uh, apply that to. Uh, aside from anything else, just out of habit, I've zeroed these out, but uh, it's it's not essential. I should say minimal height, I set that on this as well, so you can change that um, uh, without there being an issue. Just make it how you would like it to be. Okay, so within the top container, where you've set your shape divider, your uh, overflow to hidden, and your height and a background color, that's, that's really it. Inside that, you've got the these two containers. Now, one of them actually contains all of the galleries, okay? So we'll look at that one first. So I've clicked onto that, and we can have a look at the settings. So I have this set to full width. Uh, the bizarre thing, though, is that I've got this set to 120%. And the reason for that is because I, I want the, the images in these galleries to, to go off the edge. I want it to look like it's, you know, it's it's going on forever. Um, it doesn't matter that we can't see those. It's, it's supposed to look quite immersive in that front. So I've got this set to 120% uh, on this on this one anyway. Um, I've played with different values, depending on what I was wanting to achieve on some of the other sections, but uh, have a play with that. Next, I've got this set to row horizontal. And the reason for that, I'll just quickly peek into it, is because each of these galleries is actually, uh, it, it's a separate gallery element and it's set to one column. So I'll just quickly show you this, uh, layout grid and one column. So these are all separate gallery elements. So obviously to have them side by side, I need to have 
the direction of the gallery container set to row horizontal. And I've set these to uh, the center. Uh, you could have them set to left if you if you wish. Um, I have might even have that setting different on some of the other sections. Um, so yeah, just have a play with that if you need. Okay, so that's all looking good. Uh, what I will say is that you want to make sure that uh, you've got wrap set to no wrap. Um, where it's often useful to have wrap set so that it just goes to the row below. Uh, we don't actually want that. We do want to just squash these all in, space them out a bit, and let them all sort of fight for a, a, a bit on the same row. So what you need to do is make sure that no wrap is selected just so, so that they are all competing for that same row in the section. Okay, so popping along to style, uh, there's nothing really that we have here. Though it's just occurred to me, I'm sure we can actually set another um, shape divider if we want to play with this. Um, oh, I went to the top, I meant to go to the bottom, um, but no, that, that doesn't really work, does it? Um, bring to front, oh, I suppose it could. So you, you could you could double up on the uh, shape dividers there as well if you think you've got something to gain from that. Oh, there we go, I just, I just thought of it then um, and thought I'd have a look. There's a bonus one, I suppose. So the gallery container is actually where we make a lot of quite essential settings. Uh, so uh, we do need to set the position to absolute. Um, that's going to make the overflow hidden effect really uh, work. So we need to make sure that that is set to absolute and then you zero out the left and the top values. Popping along up here, I've just zeroed out all the, the margin and the padding. Um, but that should have everything working as you need it to. So position absolute is essential, and then uh, play with the width, set it to full width, and play with that percentage so that it suits what you need, and make sure that the direction is row horizontal, um, and then I think you can actually just play with the justify uh, settings or align settings as you need to. Uh, same with the gaps and the, and the column gaps there. So. Um, just play with that as you need to. Make sure that wrap is set to no wrap. Those are the essential settings. Again, check in the description below for a link where all of this is written out for you. Okay, let's have, uh, before we have a look at the overlay one, let's actually have a look at the galleries. Now, these are obviously in the gallery container and the gallery container is set row horizontal. So all of these are set to one column. And that's uh, quite essential because then we can obviously apply different row direction, or sorry, different scroll directions to each one. So I've got 13 images in this particular gallery. And as you can see, I don't actually need that many. Um, so have as few as you think you need, um, but you know, roughly about eight images going to but roughly about eight images will make sure you've got uh, enough scope to always ensure there's an image there. Okay, so uh, all I've done clearly is use the same bunch of images um, and uh, jumbled them up so they look they look nice. Uh, so again, layout is grid, column is one. Play around with the spacing as you feel you need. Um, I used aspect ratio one to one because I just thought that makes it all a bit more manageable. But again, play around with it as you need. Uh, that's that's no problem. Uh, in terms of style, I've not really uh, set any style on here. I don't need a hover animation. And advanced is where we're going to do most of our settings that really matter, to be honest. So uh, the first of all, the first thing we need to do is actually set the scroll animation. So you've selected the gallery, go along to motion effects and go along to uh, vertical scroll. Now, we want one going up and then we want the next one going down. So uh, it's easiest to set up one gallery and then duplicate it. But just remember, you need to go and set it to up and then the next one to down and up and then the next one to down. Uh, with the up scroll, however, we need to set a negative margin and I'll just show you why quickly. If I zero that one out, in order to get the up scroll effect, uh, it pushes the element down. And so it just gives us a blank image effect and we don't want that. So uh, I found it mostly works to put in a negative value of about 400. And you might want to play with that a little bit to make sure that it's staggered to the one next to it. Uh, if you don't get it right, uh, it might do something like, you know, look like it's right next to it. 
let's have a look. You see how, oh, 2,000, really. See, we don't want that effect when it's right next to it, um, even though it does scroll away. So again, experiment with that so that you get that staggered look that you're looking for. The other thing we need to look at is the actual, the width of the galleries. And uh, so I've set this to, on this particular one, I've set it to 30. You might want to set them all to 20 and it'll be, you would need more galleries to fill up that space. Uh, but again, it depends on what you're looking for. If I scroll down, you'll see I've got more galleries on this one. And so these are set to a smaller percentage. Um, but again, it's a no wrap container. So they're all just kind of squashing in there anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, have a play with that. Uh, that's actually one of the things you can decide for yourselves. Okay, so if I can get this right in my head, the essential things that you need to do on the actual gallery are set them to uh, layout grid, one column, and aspect ratio one-to-one -one is just something I'd recommend. And then on the advanced tab, you need to set the scroll animation and that will stagger one up, one down, one up, one down. And on the up ones, you need to set a negative margin just to sort of close in the images there. I should actually also mention, uh, going along to the scroll effect, again, it's something for you to play with. I've found that roughly around 10 gives the, the best effect, although this one's set to five, um, but yeah. Again, have a play with that. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the actual overlay effect. Now, obviously the galleries are elements in the gallery container and the gallery container is an element in the uh, top container, which I've called first example here. And so uh, the background overlay effects don't work. So a little bit of an old school one is that uh, what, what I've done instead is put a container over the top of everything else and then I've given that a color. So clicking on the overlay container, uh, there's nothing in this just as standard, uh, but what we've got is position absolute. And then obviously I've zeroed out the, uh, the left and the top margins there. So, so that it covers the entire thing. Um, obviously pop along to the width. You're going to want it to be full width, uh, but more importantly, you're going to want to play with that height, uh, so that, so that it looks correct. Um, what did I do there? move on zero there we go uh, so essentially you just want to make sure that it's covering the entire container uh, initially with position absolute and zero that out now if you are looking to have some content uh, like the testimony of carousel this is where you would actually place that content so as you can see I've got the overlay or content tab uh, container here and this is actually where I've got the loop carousel so you can use this uh, the, the justify settings the alignment you can use this as you would any other uh, section or container um, so you know that will work really well and then obviously this is what you apply it being the overlay and uh, you know uh, effect this is where you apply the colors uh, just play with the opacity there just to uh, have the images coming through as you would like. Okay, but again, remember all of that is you know gonna be on the link below. So if you're feeling a bit lost, follow that link and you'll have a few checklists and you can just go through that. To take this a bit further, uh, if you would like to apply something like a, a skew effect, uh, you would apply that to the actual gallery container because that, that contains all of the galleries. And so as you apply it to the, the container itself, it will tilt all of the galleries in one go. And you can get some really great effects with this. So uh, if I pop along to the advanced tab on this gallery container here, um, I'll give you a bit of a show on this. Uh, we've got rotate, so I can I can zero that out. I, I've got a 3D rotate on that one at the moment, um, but we can do uh, a normal rotate. So if I just boost that up a little bit, you can see that we've got um, a, a good rotate effect there. Now that is quite lovely enough, but obviously we've lost the top margin there. Uh, this is position absolute. And so we can actually just go and change that by playing with the offset. So we'd want to yank it up and just check that it's meeting the bottom margins as well. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to reverse that so I can show you the 3D rotate. 
So go down to transform and I'll just reset that. Uh, go to, rot <laughs> didn't reset, did it? So reset that and click on 3D rotate and you might have a, quite a bit of fun with this. It does look very effective. Um, oh, it's not coming in. Oh, there we go. Wow, I was a bit impatient. So go to one and one and you can see that little tilt that we have there. Uh, let's take that to two. Now in this instance, uh, if we go to the offset and pull this across, we're probably going to, yeah. Okay, so it's something you need to find the balance of um, and see if and see what works for you. In this instance, I think I would probably add another gallery um, or uh, increase the width of all of these galleries so that it takes up a bit more space. Um, but yeah, we, we probably need to increase the width of this also. Um, the, the 150, maybe it would have to be even bigger. Oh, yep, yeah, see, that, that did work. And then we can bring the offset in there as well. So, uh, you know, have a play with it. But look, that does look really quite effective. Just losing it there. Play with the percentages, see what you can do. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at that on the front end. Okay, so that's the original one. Uh, this is the one we were just playing with and I put that 3D effect on there. Uh, so obviously it does need to have a bit more of an increase, uh, but we were, we were going along the right lines there. Um, and so you can do a couple of things. You can play with the offset, see if we have any others there. Uh, you can increase the percentage of each of these galleries and or just increase their, their width or we can actually increase the width a bit more on there. Um, saying that also, you might just think, all right, I'll just reduce that uh, transform effect a little bit um, and, and bring it back. So like so, refresh. We still get a bit of the tilt and the perspective. Whoa, too impatient. But look at that, that looks really fantastic. Okay, the last thing I would say on all of this really is that uh, there are a lot of images here. So I would say that uh, it's it's not worth pulling in your actual featured images or your big portfolio images of 2000 pixels or anything. Um, better to decide what images you would like in this portfolio and optimize them. They only need to be about say 300, 400 pixels wide. Um, so there's no need to load up uh, potentially 20, 30, maybe 40 images uh, just for this one section. So I would say choose what images you would like uh, optimize them, size them appropriately, and use them specifically for this gallery showcase. Uh, it's, it's worth doing, it's a great effect, um, but minimize the weight of all of those images by actually using optimized three to 400 pixel images. I think that's a good shout. The last, last thing that I'll say uh, is about obviously mobile responsivity. So does this work on the tablet and on the mobile view? Um, short answer is yes. Uh, you would have to obviously uh, go through the views and, and see what works. So uh, this might struggle a bit, but see what you can change on the mobile uh, on, on the tablet and a mobile device. So you've got the width there. Uh, you can play with the actual galleries maybe space them out a bit would be an option. Um, obviously on mobile, uh, it's it's going to be a lot on the mobile effect. Now, one thing you can do is actually remove or change the scroll effect on the actual galleries themselves. So if I pop along to the advanced tab here and show you motion effects and uh, scrolling effects, you can actually disable them on the actual mobile, which is, which is what you're seeing here. Um, in some ways, I'd be a bit more inclined to uh, hide this on the mobile and just go with a background overlay. Um, and maybe even so with the tablet, if your initial setup doesn't really translate well to it, uh, it's going to look good with the actual gradient effect or maybe even with a static image that you, you add in there just for mobile devices or, or the tablet. But really it is a case of don't forget to do it, don't forget to run through these and get the best effect you can. You can actually disable the scrolling effects 
on these devices or you can actually hide some of the ele elements just to make it look a bit neater. Now this video is pushing 20 minutes uh, already just for a look under the bonnet and an explanation of how to do this. So uh, I'm not going to do a walkthrough build of this gallery but you've got all of the information that you need and uh, it's really just using those uh, essential settings and then playing with a bit of the design outside of that. So follow the link below for those essential settings and you can just checklist that. And uh, I'd love to see what you come up with, by the way. You know, throw me some links. Let, let me see what you've been uh, creating with this. If you do need a walkthrough on it, just let me know. Uh, throw it in the comments and perhaps I would do a part two of this where we just build it out with no further explanations, but uh, we'll just uh, build it together. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm Chris Good. Please like, subscribe, and I will catch you later.